I have a cool game that I want to show everyone how to play. It's, uh, it's one of my favorite. It's a really neat fantasy type game. It's called Kings and Things. And I just, I don't know, something about the creatures on your side and them fighting for you because you're like a noble knight and they're all going to um, fight these battles and take over the citadels of your opponents. So we're going to check that out today. Here's our map. And no two games will ever be alike because, I mean, look at it. You can, you can put it any piece where you want. There's seven different types of land features. And then you got the sea and you can make islands and whatever. You know, they have a little diagram where you can copy that. So I have the, uh, the new game, which this is the newer game. It's the 2012 version, I believe. And I also have the older game, which is the um, 2000, uh, it's a 1990, it's 1996, I believe. So 1996, it's not as colorful. You can see the, the rules are just blue and uh, black print and the tiles are much smaller. But it's still the same game, plays the same. You can still find these on the internet. Um, you know, control markers, everything's paper, cardboard, everything is. Uh, unlike this game where you got plastic pieces of the citadels, big wood pieces of these uh, control markers, and then these thick chits of your creatures. You got gold, your heroes. Everyone gets one of these boards and you're supposed to hide your pieces. And then you have a little cheat sheet here. It's got your events, magic, and your uh, heroes, what the heroes' uh, powers are. So everybody, uh, I'll put this down for right now. Everyone starts the game um, with 10 gold and 10 pieces. I just dipped into the bag. Um, here's the bag. And there's tons, it's really heavy. So I just randomly selected these 10. This guy's upside down. Um, you may keep these or you may get rid of some. It's up to the opponent or up to you. It's up to you if you want to keep some or, um, you know, you know, you don't want a snake because you don't have that land because these creatures can only fight in the land they're supposed to be in. Forest, jungle, so forth. So you would just say, yeah, I want to get rid of this. And then you pick out a new one. Uh, this particular um, player, the yellow, I guess, um, drew out two of these cities. You can only at one time, anytime you draw, you can have, you can have more than one income. Now this particular guy, he's got one income marker, but he's also got a treasure, which is okay. They're two different things. So this guy would have to get rid of this. He'd have to put this in a bag and get a new one because you cannot have two of those. There's also other um, income markers that are similar that you would only have to keep one. You can't keep them both. Um, this uh, first player, this goes to, if you're playing three player mode, I'm only doing two here, for example, uh, this would go around. So if this person started, after it goes to the third person, this would move to this person, and then this person would then be last again, or last because he was first. But two players, you're just going back and forth, so it doesn't matter. Got your dice, so see if I can get a hero. And I rolled a one, so you have to roll a, a five or a six to get that guy. And he's got range, which is great. Range, this is magic. The star is a magic. R is range. Um, this is magic. And the C is a charge. Here's a charging, which you roll two dice for a charge. And these are just normal, normal creatures. They don't have any, they're all melee. Here's a flying creature. So what we wanna do is we wanna place these on the board and you can only put them on your controlled marker. So, and you would put them on like this and no one knows what you have. <clears throat> so if these guys go into battle, if they're gonna battle someone, if someone comes into this land, um, this is a forest, so these two right here would obviously, if you, if someone wants to fight these, I and mean, you can keep them covered, but if they do eventually go into a battle, they would lose automatically. They would have to be taken off the board because this is not the land that they belong in. 
um, these particular guys go into the swamp. Now they, if they go into a battle with someone else, so someone moves into there, and they would be uncovered once you move in, and now you can do battle. Magic always um, starts the battle off first, so they're going to roll a dice. And let's just do an example here. You did a three, so a two or below is a hit that he's hit the uh, opponent here. And this guy has two characters, so he can roll two dice. And he's both got a six and a five. He would need a one and a two. So he didn't, didn't do it. This particular guy didn't either. So now you either retreat, he can retreat back, um, or he can, he can stay there. And again, this one is just a plane, so he would, he wouldn't do any good. Everyone gets a, a little keep, and it goes like this. Starts off with the keep. Then you got a little, uh, I don't know, it's a little wall around you keep, and then you got your castle, and then your citadel. If you're doing a battle, you want to put your marker on your battle. Everybody should be upside down, no one knows what you have. Unless you're actually fighting, then you have to uncover it, but once you're done fighting, you can uncover them, you can cover them back up like that, so no one knows what what armor you have or what kind of characters or fighting force you have. So take this plaid, I'll mark off. The way we're going to count this, let's just say this uh, particular opponent, he's got all this land. Look at that. So every two, for every two land you own, you get to dig in your bag for um, one chip. So here you got you know, that's um, two, four, six, seven. So he's going to get uh, at least three. So he's going to be able to go into the bag and get three during the phase. On the back of this here, you can see all the phases. Phase one, and it goes down. And you just follow along. Everyone gets one of these. So you go, you go for the hero. You dig in your bag, recruit, so forth, so on, fight, combat. And then over here it talks about how your values, combat, and your cities and your um, castle can fight, which is pretty cool. All right, so counting gold, let's say um, he's got a village there, and he's got a city there, and he decided to build a little, um, what is that called, a... Uh, Oh, I see it's a keep okay so this one's a tower and that's a keep so we're looking at uh, one two points here two three four five six it's got six points and then you add up your land um, and then yeah you add up each one of these land or represents one more point so he's going to get uh, all that in gold. All right, so he's got a, a dude here. He's like, hey, I'm going to go explore the desert. Okay, nobody's there. His um, opponents are elsewhere. So he slides this over there, and he's like, okay, I want to I wanna control the desert now. And he was here, so we'll put a marker there. So you got to roll the dice. Okay, he's got a one which means you basically win the land. Either a one or a six wins the land. So he just he just controls it. That was pretty simple. All right, so what if it wasn't a one? Let's roll it again and see if we get anything but a one. There's a three, all right. Going, gotta use the bag here. And we're gonna go ahead and draw three pieces out. I think I got three here. So he's got um, one. Oops, sorry, it's only two. One more. So he's got three. So 
So he's either got to bribe these guys or he's got to, uh, well, this particular one is an event. This has to, uh, the black cloud, that's going to give you a negative. So he can bribe this particular one here for two gold and this one right here for three gold. Um, or you can fight them. And if you turn this guy over, well, let's, let's use someone that's already a desert. There. So he's a, he's a little nomad. And he says, hey, I'm going to fight the killer penguin. So he's going to go ahead and roll. And it just so happens that he got a one. So um, the other particular character can roll too. So he's going to roll. He's got a one. So a two or a one will, will kill. It's so basically they just kill each other off. They get removed back into the, the hole. Now these two things have to stay. And he doesn't get that control marker. So this one, um, you can't bribe them any longer. Well, this one, this is just a black cloud. Basically it stays there for the rest of the game. Anytime you try to get points on it, it's just negative one. That's pretty much how the game goes. Um, you, if you can build yourself a citadel on your land and you're able to keep that for a, a total turn and if you have 20 gold and you have the citadel, you win the game. It's that simple. You just have to go up in stages. Anybody can attack the citadels. Um, you don't destroy them, but you have to use a dice to say, hey, he's got three damage on it, so his power is uh, not as strong anymore. And you'd want to build that back up again. Best just to buy your own citadel and work it out. Yep, lots of gold. So the game is really fun. I uh, enjoy this. Uh, yeah, it looks a lot like Catan with the map and the land, different land. So, um, but here you, you're fighting with uh, creatures that are totally hidden. So nobody knows what you have until there's a fight. And you can only, you'll fight what you want to fight. You know, you, you'll retreat. If you go into someone's uh, land and you're like, hey, I don't have enough of those creatures. Just retreat. Just go back into another one of your lands. Um, that's probably the best thing to do is retreat. Because uh, once you turn your creature over that you're fighting, it has to match the the land you're in. The only one that don't have to do that are uh, the superheroes. They fight in any land. Uh, unless it's a, a master of the land, like this particular one. Is a desert master, so he has to be in the desert to to fight. Otherwise, he's no good. And uh, Ice Land, Ice Lord, they can fight anywhere. So the heroes are great to have. This whole game, when you do battles, is all about concealment of bluffing. You know, you got this big group of um, soldiers. Going across, I mean, you're going to be nervous. You don't know what they have. They could have who knows what. And uh, he's got two points here. He's got his little um, tower. So we, we don't know. The maximum amount of uh, fighting force you can have in one square is 10. So he's got already here. Um, I think he's got six. So he can only have four more here. Doesn't mean that's the maximum in the square. Because you might be able to, you might be fighting someone and they can also put 10 there. And that doesn't include, um, you know, your keeps or your citadels. So the object is just to build your army to protect your land and to build a, um, a citadel. And to try to get as many uh, land as possible because you get points for the land. So the more gold you can acquire, the faster you make your citadel, the quicker you'll win the game. So it's, uh, it's pretty fun. I actually enjoy this. It doesn't really take hours to play it. Usually um, within an hour and 10 minutes or even an hour, you, someone's going to be winning. I mean, you're always going in the bag for something. We can look over here. You can see there's, here look, there's two mines. 
silver and these go on the mountain so if if you if you are not going into a mountain these are no you know you have to put those back because they don't they don't belong you can't place them you have to place your what what did i have yeah you have to place these on a mountain but you have to be going into it so if this guy was going in there and he pulled that out of the bag, you can put that on there, put the control marker, and now you get two, three points for that, just by having that. That's perfect. And this is a swamp guy, so he wouldn't, you wouldn't want to keep him there. You'd want to find somebody with a mountain, yeah, which I don't have over here. Very fun game. Um, it's great. It's a battle. You can go attack your opponent, take your forces, and move across. They can only move four. So um, every one of these squares is is either a one or a two um, to move, and you can only move four. So if you're going through jungle, that's two. Mountains are two. Forest is two. And swamp is two. Everything else is one, so they can move. Um, let's say this guy wanted to move from here and attack his old pal over there. So you can go one, two, three, four, he would make it. Or you can go one, two, three, four. Now he can be there. And he would move like this so his opponent doesn't know who he is. And they too would be like that. And then when you battle, you turn him over. And this guy... If he does turn this guy over, he may not. He might want to retreat or he'll lose it. So these two can do battle. They're both, one's flying, one's magic. Magic fights first, rolls the dice first, and then your opponent. You could probably get away with even having five play. Um, you just got to find some pennies or something to, to use instead of those. But it's pretty cool. It um, gives you a 3D. The map is like 3D almost. It's pretty cool. And these are the best. You know, if you have one of these, I mean, anything under a 5 is going to kill. It's going to be hit. So that's, that's great. And then there's a 6. Look at this. If you can get this, in order to acquire this one, you have to roll a 6. So while he's over there, you, you got that fade, so you roll, it's a two. They're so hard to get, but once you get them, they're so powerful because you don't even have to roll. A six or anything under is, is going to be a hit. So these are awesome in battle. He's over here. He's in this particular um, battle with this other dude. So when he rolls, all magic will roll first. He's a flyer. So let's go ahead and roll these. Eh, anything under so what I should have done was roll for each one actually he doesn't have to roll so you're basically only rolling once he's got a one so two or one is a hit so this guy is gonna say okay well he doesn't have any magic so his phase is pretty much not there yet so he's gonna this phase of magic is over he has to take a hit actually two hits so he has to remove his his guy and this one he can say hey I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show this I'm just gonna retreat so he might retreat and then this will now be it now be yellow and that's pretty much how the battle works and then he can just cover these back up well this one you can't cover up because if you turn these ones over it's a different it's a different uh, hero so he has to stay like this all heroes pretty much are, this, are face up. You have to, and when they go back into the pile, you have to turn them over if they die. So there's these are the heroes you have to choose from. So this particular guy um, is on a force. He dies, comes back, turn him over, and now he's a different. He's the ice lord. And again, ice lords can only be on ice to fight. They can move around the board. You just have to go to ice in order to have that power. 
otherwise they're useless and you know you don't know what these are only the uh so these are swamp and if you want to you can just leave them like this as as like a as like a barrier don't fight me because look what i got so you can leave them face up or you can leave them like this because your opponent won't know what you have and neither one of these can fight <laughs> This guy has to go to ice, so he's over there. So I did I did start with this game. I I think my sister gave this game to me. It uh, I just really liked it. I thought it was a cool game to play. Um, and then I bought this other, the newer game. Uh, the older one was like a, I guess they call them a bookshelf game. And again, the instructions are real similar. I mean, Basically, only the color of the books and all that are the different things. Everything else is similar. I mean, the gold, you got square little chits here, your dice and your control markers. I mean, your forts and your heroes are in here. It's a really fun game from the 70s. Probably can't find those on the internet anymore. So go ahead and buy your game, play your game, doesn't matter if you have the old version or the new version, it's a fun family game for four people or five people if you use pennies, maybe dimes and nickels as your control markers. So it's, it's a great game. Um, I enjoy it. I enjoy playing this one. So. Thanks for watching this, and I'll have more games coming up. Hello, everyone. Um, okay. Hello, everyone out there. No. Hello, everyone out there. Um, I've been getting, um, no. So today, I'm going to, uh, no.